Our Father, we thank you. We thank you so very much. What a wonderful God that we have. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you so much that you are so dependable that we can stand confidently and raise our heads high knowing that indeed you are with us. Our rock and our fortress, we thank you. Thank you so much. This day, Lord, we continue to fellowship with you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to fellowship with you. So today we come, Lord, waiting to hear, to feed from your throne. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us, King of glory. Help us to know how to relate with you intimately. Help us to walk a journey of friendship with you. Touch our minds to understand. Take us deep in you, Lord, that we shall be able to remain in you and bear fruits that shall remain. We bless you. We exalt you. We take charge of everything around this place. We silence all the noises. We command all the powers of the evil one, of destruction, of sleepless, of sleeping, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the enemy that brings slumber and sleep and, and confusion in the mind and wandering thoughts. We say no to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we speak to you, demons that are targeted to disorganize this service, to disorganize the, 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 the word. We say that the power of the Lord is here and we destroy you and we say no to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever that is raising against the King of Glory, today we say open up because the King of Glory is here. And who is this King of Glory? The one that is mighty in battle. We say no to you, no to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we speak to every mind, to every thought, to every being right now in this place that your mind and everything is soaked in the blood of Jesus and we are connected with you, my Father. Let your angels take charge. Let your presence, let your cloud cover this place that we shall feed from you. And by the time we leave this place, we'll be exactly what you want us to be. And the people that you've chosen to walk a journey of love and friendship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, last night when I was asking God what we need to share, I felt the Spirit of God leading me to share something which I would call the engine that will help us to operate in these gifts. The engine to operate, the gifts, to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And what is that engine? It's the one that I want to share. Let's read um, 1 Cor Cor Corinthians 13. Thirteen, yes. I'm going to read NIV so that we, we shorten the, the time. Um, it says, "If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge." And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. I, I hope you are moving with me. Verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there, is, there are prophecies, 
they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. We can jump because of the time. Let's move to, um, to verse 13. And now, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Praise God. Praise God. When we look at this scripture, it shows that indeed these gifts are very, very important. But this word, remember these gifts are coming from Col Corinthians 12, the previous chapter. But Paul continues to explain to Corinthians and say that even if you have all these, but if you do not have love, you are just nothing. You are just a resounding gong. You are just making noise. Even if you speak in tongues, even if you prophesy, even if you do all these th good things that we've talked about, but if you don't have love, you are completely doing nothing. And the word continues to say that all these will reach a time and they cease. Only one thing that remains, it is love, faith, and hope. But the greatest among the three, it's love. So that takes me back to know that the only key that we have to walk with God, we must have love. Are we together there? Love, love. It is the only thing that will help us to be able to achieve the work of completeness, the work, the successful work with the Holy Spirit, with our Father, if we have love. But if we don't have love, we are missing him, and we shall not able to reach the standard. Let's read John uh, 15. John 15. From verse 9. Are we there? Yes. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I love verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, my father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Are we together? Now, when you look at this scripture, it shows you that now, according to the love that our Lord Jesus has for us, because he says that he loved the Father and he, he obeyed his commands, and because of that, he has also given us the same love. And then he says on verse 13, he says that I want to, uh, you, you remain in my love. If you remain in my love and keep my commands, my father's command and remain in my love, your joy will be complete. Hmm? And then he says, greater love has no one than this. That's one of the signs of greatest love. Because he says, he has given up his life for his friends. 
Now we are no longer servants. Can you imagine that? Do we really qualify for that? I don't think we qualify. But because of the greatest love that he has for us, he has picked us from wherever, imagine we're just far away, he just pulled us and says, now I'm going to die for you. As soon as he finished dying for us, he says, you are now my friends, you are no longer servants. And after that, he says, now I'm going to reveal everything my father has revealed to me. You can imagine that. Because he says, I no longer call you servants because the servant does, know, not, does not know his master's business. But instead, I've called you friends. For everything I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Amen. Amen. A question to each one of us. Do we really feel we know all the father's business? Do we understand? Are we walking in that measure or that standard of what he expects us to be? That's a question I want to throw to each one of us. Do we really know? Do we understand? Are we really friends? Because he continues to say, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. Does that speak to us? I don't think anyone can say that it's me who looked for him. We all Andrew was talking about the grace. By the grace of God, each one of us was picked by his grace, by his love. And he says, I chose you and I appointed you so that you may go and bear fruits. The fruits that shall remain. And then he adds on to say, and that whatever you ask in my name, my father will give it to you. Amen. I know many times our relationship with the Father, our relationship with God, it's about petitions, asking, give me this, do this for me, help me this, do this for me. If you do this, I will do this. You know, it's about asking, asking. And not knowing that once we are in that relationship of love, it is automatic. Because he says that he appointed us. As long as we, we walk in that love, before even you ask, it's already known. Because we are friends. I, I think let's talk, uh, think about friendship, our usual normal friendship, human friendship. If you have a friend, do you know that you find that you walk, you share, you converse, you are just in, in cabos. Hmm? I hear the young ones call it KB. All the time in that KB, so you find that before even you say, please help me for this, already he knows. Because you have already said, you know, I have this problem. I don't feel well. This and because he's a friend. And if the friend has the capacity and is in love all at all the time, obviously he would put a solution. So here he says that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give to you. Are we together? So to me, I see that why we struggle, why we don't feel him, why we don't feel loved or we feel we are below the situations and the circumstances, it's because we lack that intimate relationship with him, that love, that friendship. There's a gap. Do you understand the language I'm using? Do you feel it practically, what I'm saying? I don't think anyone can say that me, I'm so much in that love that whatever I, I think of, already he knows. Are we in that closeness? I think there is a gap. If we want to be realistic, we haven't reached there. And I believe that's what he expects us to be. We are now in the season where we are in the wicked world. The environment is, is turning dark. So if we do not connect in that love, in that intimate relationship, other things may take us away, or the struggle may be too much. So it is a time that God is calling us to enter into that relationship where we shall operate in his power. Because once we are in that relationship of love, there's no one who can stand before you. Many lies will come. The negative things will come. They will shout to you. But because you have a secret of that 
friend that you have, there's nothing that will shake you. Amen? But if we do not connect into that, any wind, any, this wave which is, is coming to the world may take us away. So it's time that we need to fix ourselves in that love, in that relationship with him. Praise God. Let me read one last scripture. Um, First John verse 4. First John. Uh, sorry, chapter 4, not verse. Chapter 4. Verse 7 to 17. First John chapter 4. Yes. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, remember he's still addressing us as friends. Since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him, he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, and God lives in them, and they're in God, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. We are putting a full stop there. In this world, we are like Jesus. Do we feel we are, we are that? If I ask one of you or any of us, can you stand right and say, me, I'm like Jesus now? Do we really feel confident to say that? And he says that this is how love is made complete that would have confidence on the day of judgment. And how, how is it made complete? When you go up, it says, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him or in them. So meaning, we need to, you know, there's another scripture which says that he abides in us. He makes a home with us. You know, once we're in love, we are with God, and God is with us. So we need to aim at reaching that stage of knowing that, yes, I am God, he is God. Like, uh, he, I'm one with him, we are one. He abides in me. I'm Jesus here on this world, on this earth. Isn't it a bit, the bar is a bit high, isn't it so? But we can make it. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. He left him as a helper to help us. Praise God. It is very possible it is very possible. Maybe we could ask ourselves a question. How do we do that? How do I achieve that? What could be the process? How do I do it? I know that is the challenging part. How? Obviously, the details, the steps, individually, it has to be the Holy Spirit. Maybe we can just share generally, but it is a, a, a personal journey with the Lord. And how do we do that? Maybe I can mention some few areas that I think personally, which I believe I'm not here. Of course, I'm also uh, aiming at moving to another level. But what I can share is that um, the steps we need to go through 
to achieve that relationship with God. Because what I know is that all of us love God. I hope they are right. Yes? Do we love God? You are quiet. We love God. And I know even the people in the world there who have not even confessed, they love God. That's a fact. Even thieves pray to God, meaning they know there is God. But even if we love God, how do we achieve that level of walking in intimate relationship with him where he can turn and say, my friend, tomorrow this and this is happening. And then you say, but you know, I'm not feeling comfortable. Oh, but I don't have money. What do I do? Don't mind. I'll give you. Like that close relationship. How do we achieve that? And that's what he's expecting us to be. Because the closer you come, the uh, clear understanding of his ways and his commands and the fear of hurting him will help you or help us not to go into mixing with the world. Praise God. One thing I believe that is very practical. You know, when God was creating man, he gave us ability to make choices. We must intentionally make, create an environment to have time with God. What do I mean? Creating an an environment where you can start to relate with God. One, we need to be in that unceasing relationship. How do we do that? We have 24 hours in the day. How many minutes do you give him? We wake up so early, the demands and the pressures are there, you run out. When you are out of your bed, you run maybe for work or whatever you are running for the whole day. You, they, the world hits you this side, hits you this side, you are tired, you are complaining, all these things are good, okay. You come back, you are tired, you don't even have time to say thank you. You've ended that day when you are alive. So, when do we give him time? Those are simple things, by the way. Simple, but they mean a lot. We may say that maybe for us we have matured in working with him. But do we really give him time? Enough time? Or we come and use him just to say, thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you. I've finished my day. Please help me tomorrow. This night, let me sleep well. Tomorrow, please, please. You know, I have to meet this man. There's my money there. You know, those are the things we'll tell him most times. When do we get time to relate with him? When do we get time to have that friendship of just having time with him? Or maybe let me ask a question. Do we have friends? Let me see your hands if you have friends. Usual human beings friends. We have them. How much time do you create for your friend? How do you feel the zeal to create time to meet that friend? The excitement within. I hope we do that. Yes? And you must create time, whether you are busy or what. If this friend says, but I wouldn't to see you, immediately you feel like, okay, you come. Even if you are busy. Isn't it so? That's a friend. Now, if we do that to the people, how much time do we give God? We must create a relationship, an environment for him to have that fellowship with us. And it has to be consistent. Consistency is very, very important. Because I know most times, you can create some time, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. Those who are very good, they can give an hour in the day. And then you feel like, ah, this one. And you know he's so good that even when you give that time, he comes down to you and you have a beautiful time. But after that, you may take days. Then after those other days, you are doing that one of the religious style, hmm? because we take him for granted. And I think there is no way we are going to have this relationship of love, the intimate love, when we do not create that environment. Because I know the Holy Spirit is there waiting. He's our link. Hmm? That is the link we use. He reminds us, by the way, most times. He, you feel like something calling you, 
have, you, you just go and pray. Or go and have time. But you keep shutting it down with the noises, other things that are shouting on you. By the end of it, you find you have no time. You remember when you are going to sleep and you are already tired, you are full of every detail of the day and you don't have time. But we must create an environment. We must create the time with him. And that environment, why I'm calling it environment? Yes, it is time, but plus the environment must be conducive. You cannot create time when you're in the midst of other things. You say, this is my time with you, and then your mind is out there to hear what is happening. Children are crying, or da, 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 like your mind is working. You cannot settle and fellowship with him. You must have an environment where you say, this is for you and me. And just commune as a person. Talk to him as a friend. By the way, I like that. It's far away better than the religious way of approaching him. Because most times we think he's there and you are here. Not knowing that he's around us. And that time has to be there for him. From that point, you start feeling all the time. Even those who don't have time. Because our journeys are not the same. You may be working. You, are not ha you don't have uh, independence of saying, I have this time, let me go and pray. You are being used. You are at a lower level. But still, as you are working, you can remain in communion with God. Do you know that? You can. You can have that unceasing uh, communion with him. Whatever you are doing, he's part of you. Whatever pressure you are going through, he's part of you. You call him there. You make him part of what, of what you are doing. If you are writing a report, you say, Holy Spirit, help me. How do I quickly do this? If you feel tired, Holy Spirit, help me. This, like, you be with him. Or even ask him, how do I handle this? Because what I'm sharing, may I know those things, there are situations that force us to do that. Where you find the pressure is too much or the timelines are too tight, you can't, can't make it, your body is tired, you have so many, but there's a way how personally if this I can share. There are many times when I ask God, I say, God, balance this for me. It's too Like you have this pressure, you have this one, you have this, everything demands for you. And you don't know what to do. But you turn to him and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Balance it for me. And I'm telling you, he's very smart. He'll do it. Very smart. Everything will be perfect as long as you give it to him. And another thing, you must have the brokenness, the brokenness of heart, the contrite spirit within you. Do not go no boasting of who you are, of what he has made you to achieve. No. Even spiritual miracles, no. Just have that. Know that any time you may have fallen short of his glory, of what he demands for. Just all the time, allow him to search you. Allow him to make you what he wants you to be. So brokenness is one key that will help you to know that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. What you understand is not measuring up to him. And those very um, gifts that he'd want you to, to walk in, you may not measure up. But when you allow him all the time and say, please help me, Lord, that's one thing that I know is also very important. The third one, obedience. Obedience to his voice. Many times, he speaks to us because I want to assure you, as long as you create that time for him every day of your life, every day, and you come in a simple way, you come as a child, you come as a friend, I'm telling you, you will have that good communion and you will even hear his instructions. You will hear him guiding you. And that's how we need to have that obedience of heart. Once you're obedient to him, that makes you strong. In our obedience, on obedience, we are very strong. That's when you can stand up and know, even if the world is saying A, B, C, D, but according to him, he says C. And you stand up. Because your heart has connected with him, and you have no doubt, because of that communion, you hear him and you understand his voice. Each one of us can hear God. Yes? At all levels, by the way, we can hear God. Even these little children, they hear God. It's only that you allow him to work in you. Because many times, we turn out to, be, to reason. 
when he tells you something, sometimes you compare with uh, our natural understanding or the environment. What would people say? How do I go about this? How do I explain this? Ah, maybe let me wait. Maybe let me do. You know, we reason so much. At the end, you know the Holy Spirit is so gentle, he does not force. If we are not careful, it keeps on reducing and reducing, you lose and miss the timing. So obedience is very, very important. And it will help you to conquer the, the laziness within the flesh. You know, many times we, may, we, we like now I'm talking to all of us, we are going to pick it and say, that's very good. And you think, let me go and apply it. When you reach there, now, Laziness comes in. I'm so tired. Let me first rest. Let me first do this. You know? But when you are committed to him and you understand his voice, because he'll be calling you, and that obedience, obedience which comes from the fear of him, it will quicken you to say, you know what? No. Let me go. You capture. You, cap you, you take charge of even your flesh, which is demanding, or other things that are demanding, which may be very good reasons. You may even have a family where visitors may come, or your husband will say, no, 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 this is the time to do this. But once you know God has spoken, you, he will give you wisdom of how not to grieve him, and you balance everything smoothly. He's there for you. Amen. So, I really want to summarize this by saying that only if we have an intentional commitment to have a relationship with him and have that intimacy with him, that's where our strength is. I want to tell you that Jesus managed this because he was one with the Father and is expecting us to be one with him. That's how he stood at the tomb of Lazarus and says, Lazarus, come out. And the thing had to open up. Because you don't speak by yourself. You are one with him, remember. The one in you is strong. That's how he walked with Moses. And when he reached Red Sea, Moses started weeping and crying. And he said, why are you crying? And then Moses said, people here, da, 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 da. He said, what do you have in your hands? That connection, that communion. You understand that? And it's for all of us, by the way. It's not for special people like Moses. No. All of us. It is for us. And then you have a situation around you. And the situation is eating you up. Fear is capturing you. You don't know what to do. And you start crying. One day, two days, you are weeping over the situation. Instead of in that cry, connect it with him. And call him into that. Let not this noise of the evil one uh, cover your mind and you allow it. Like how children of Israel sinned by murmuring and complaining because they feared. They desired those foods and all that and, and they complained over Moses and they started looking at the giant uh, Pharaoh who is following he, them and, uh, and the armies instead of tuning into him. Because once you tune in him, that's when he said, get that stick, hit on the water. And that was it. The waters listened. So that's where our strength is. That's where our power is. Every situation has to bow to the one in you. Amen? Amen. I want you not to forget, if you forget any other, but not this one. He says, in this world, we are like Jesus. In this world, we are like Jesus. And the word says, we are the salt, we are the light. And that's what he is. And how do we be like Jesus? He's the Ryan of Judah, remember? He has never been defeated. He's mighty in battle. That is Jesus that we want to be like, you know? He's the, the root of David. He's that giant. Hmm? The root of Jesse. He has never been defeated. Every situation that stands before you, you are Jesus within you. Remember that. If the enemy stands there like a mountain, Remember himself, he says, if you have a little faith of a mustard seed, that mountain can move. Can you imagine? He's so great. He's so big. He's so powerful. But we miss by the lies of the evil one. We miss by not knowing who we are, who he is, and that love to connect it with him, walk with him. 
where you have that intimacy and whatever disturbs you, already it disturbs him. Remember Mary, the sister of Lazarus? When Mary cried, because she was so much in love and intimacy with, with Jesus, you remember? Martha kept on talking, talking, talking. But, and I know most, most people are like Martha. That's where the enemy steals us. We love him, we open our homes, we do all those sorts of things, but we miss the secret of intimacy. But when Mary came, you remember Mary came, for her she just wept, that was it. The Bible says that Jesus, he was troubled in the spirit. Why the love? He could not bear seeing Mary crying because she's a friend. The pain of Mary now entered into the, the heart of Jesus. He had to look for a solution. Immediately he says, where did they bury him? Of course he knew as his God, but he wanted to allow people to, like, to make them now move to that place. And when he reached there, that was the solution. Immediately the solution had to come because of the love that was communing with Jesus. Mary you didn't use words. But her feelings were the feelings of the Lord. And indeed, a solution was put there. And that's the key to solve all our problems. That's the key to help us achieve what we want to achieve. To fulfill the purpose for us on this earth. Amen? So I request that we create time. I know some of you may be having, but let us go deep. Let us create time. What do we gain in these things that we are running to? Do you know that you can take more time with him and the shorter time you are out, you achieve more than, not even more. Because you don't beat the bush, he will be guiding you, do this, do this. It will be so fast because you are very informed. Hmm? He's in control. You don't need to struggle so much. And that is the secret of moving in the victory that he expects us to move in. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Do we get something out of this? Are you with me? So may I would request that our prayer will be that God help us, teach us how to love you, how to walk with you. It is a daily life. It is a, a every second life, every minute life. We must be in intimacy, in communion with him. That's when we shall be able to reach that standard that he wants us to reach. If he can call you friend, really, are we friends? That's a question to us. Are you feeling you indeed a friend? A friend knows the secrets of his friend. A friend is a secret keeper. A friend knows the feeling of his friend. Are we friends? So as we conclude and end this, I request that we pray for ourselves to walk as friends and friends who are powerful because our friend is a powerful one. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. Everything bows before him. His name, at his name, every knee bows down. That's he, our friend. And once we walk in that, we'll be walking like fire. Even demons cannot touch you. How can we be around demons and they're around us and they're comfortable? Something is wrong with us. Around us, we have, they're around us, you know? They should be feeling that fire of knowing that in us, it is that fire. His eyes are fire. We in us, is, there is that strength. Praise God. And that's when we shall be able to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of wisdom will be upon us because his wisdom. The word says his wisdom. The word of knowledge, the knowledge will be informed very well because he's our friend. He had already revealed the secrets. Even the times and the things that are coming ahead. Let me give an example as I end. You remember Daniel? Daniel, because he walked with God very well, God had to reveal the seasons that were ahead of time. Many years to come. You remember that, that the interpretation of the dream by... by um, What's the name of the man? Nebuchadnezzar, was it Nebuchadnezzar? Yes. Who, who got a dream which was showing the changes of the kingdoms and the kingdoms. But this young man was a human being like you. And he went and asked God, 
and God revealed the secrets of the times that we are in even right now. Can you imagine that? That's friendship. Hmm? Praise God. So we need to walk in that. We all qualify to be friends. Can we target? Can we intentionally know that we need to be friends and work on that by creating time for him, creating a relationship with him, walking with him. In your, you can create even in your car. As you are driving to work, you have no time okay, to sit. Your car can be that point of meeting with him. Your bedroom can be that. Your kitchen can be that. Everywhere you are, you can be with him. It's very possible. Just quiet yourself to tune into that. He'll be around you, and he'll be that very friend that will walk with you. And at the end of it, you shall bear fruits, and the fruits that shall remain. And on that day of judgment, you'll walk with confidence because you have walked like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's stand and pray. I think at this level, let it be personal, each one of us. Check yourself. If you are doing well, thank God, but don't be comfortable. Take it deeper. There is a lot that we haven't known. If you are still struggling, be sincere to him and tell him that I really need you. Help me, teach me how to work with you, how to love you, how to create time for you or how to be in that intimacy, the unceasing uh, communion with him. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your truth. Your word tells us that without love, we are nothing. And we know that you are love. And because you are love, you called us to be in love with you. Your love is unconditional. It is not conditional of who we are, of what we are. It's just the cross that enabled us to all be accommodated and be received as your friends. Thank you for choosing us. You say that you chose us, we did not choose you. But Lord, teach us how to love you. Teach us how to walk with you every day of our lives. Yes, we know it by our minds. We understand it by reading the word. But Lord, Holy Spirit, make it practical to us. Make it real. Lord, I pray that today, today, King of Glory, we raise our hearts to you as a church, as a body, as your brethren. Release your power, Lord. Release your power, Holy Spirit. Release your touch to us, O God. Melt the hardness of heart. Melt the minds that are so uh, distracted. The mind that has been used to the way of living. Release your power today that you melt everything within us, that everything with the system within us would be, commi would, would be uh, melted to your likeness, to that that you want us to be, Holy Spirit. I pray that Holy Spirit will create the hunger and the thirst within us, that you will call us and will hear you, that you will pull us out of the noise, that you will take us to that sacred place, which is your presence. Holy Spirit, I pray that you've touched each one of us. Touch us, O oh God, so that we can be able to feel you, to walk with you. Make it so possible, Lord. Make it possible. Make it practical, Lord, that our environment will, con will, will obey. Our environment will submit to your presence, to that that you want us to be, Lord. I pray that King of Glory, whoever has listened to this word, those who are here with us, Lord, and even those who are online, and those who will hear it another day, Holy Spirit, I pray that make your impact on us all. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you, our Father. We need to walk as friends. We need to walk with you. 
We need to commune with you. We need to have a conversation with you. Make us so simple. Make us children that we shall relate with you as your own friends, as your children, as those ones who do not uh, need to do so much, that we work as servants, but will come as friends. Help us, Lord. Make it so easy for us. Each one of us at our points of need. Each one of us at our levels of understanding. Each one of us in our environment. I pray that King of Glory, let, that, let it be a new experience that we shall be able to stand and indeed we remain confident and our joy will be complete. Your peace that will fill us, your, 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 your love will, will, be, will overflow within us that every moment of our lives, love will come out and life will come out and fruits will come out. The love to one another, the love that will help us not to condemn anyone, to judge anyone. Your Lord tells us that it is patient. It is not, it is not envious. It is kind. It, is, it, is, it does not, it does not uh, dishonor others. It, love is help us that we shall walk in love, the total and the fullness of your love. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. And we hide in you, King of glory. And Holy Spirit, we trust you that you teach us deeper than what our words were able to speak, that you take us deeper to where you want us to reach. Holy Spirit, our teacher, fulfill your work within us. Our hearts are open to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.